Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to today's vlog. This is video 13 in my series on my writing process. And today's video is going to go hand in hand with the other video that I'm posting today. Uh, the first video, and I, I should say I'm kind of changing some, some things up from how I originally had planned it. Uh, so I'm kind of going on a whim here a little bit. I'm changing some things up uh, on what I'm going to cover. I'm going to kind of group some things that make sense to go together in the first video. And then in the next video, uh, things that will go together well will be in that video. So you'll see why as we go along. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so by this point in the process, your manuscript should be all finished. It should be completely ready to go. Uh, if you've started promotion, that's great. If you have pre-order set up uh, on Amazon or through another uh, website or anything, that's good too. Uh, the next part is to get your book ready to go to market. Part of what I talked about in the last video with promotion uh, and pre-order specifically is that you have to have certain things uh, certain book details inputted into KDP, uh, Kindle Direct Publishing again. Uh, you have to have those, e those details nailed down when you put, set your book up for pre-order. So those things like the title, if you have a subtitle, the edition number, uh, yourself, if you're, you know, you're the author, and then if you have anybody else that worked on it with you, an editor, an illustrator, you know, whatever the case may be, you can add those in, and then a book description. Uh, it, you don't have to choose an ISBN, which ISBN is usually with print. On Amazon, KDP, an ASIN, which is Amazon Standard Identification Number, uh, that's the number that is assigned to an ebook to the Kindle books and that's just automatically assigned you don't have to have one you, I guess you can't really have one though they just give it to you and what I mean basically by having a number already is that with ISBNs you can buy them uh, Balker if you can uh, Google that I'll put it in the description but Balker uh, they have ISBNs that you can buy uh, they're pretty much the number one uh, company I think that works with the ISBNs and kind of keeping everything cataloged throughout the world. Um, so with print you can have them already and then you can just assign it to your book, but with Kindle books they'll assign it to you. And again, keep in mind with the book summary or description or synopsis, whatever you want to call it, uh, the idea here is to get the basic gist of your book across to the reader, but don't give away too much information. A lot of people uh, suggest that it's good to throw in a question at the end of the synopsis or the description, and that'll have the, the reader or the potential reader asking, okay, what, what happens in this story? I want to know what happens. Uh, so that's something good to keep in mind when you're writing your synopsis. Again, you don't want to have it be too long because it's just going to be the little blurb that is on the, pay the sales page on Amazon uh, when the book goes live. So it should be enough just to get the basic gist of the book across and to entice the reader into looking into your book further. So those are all kind of the external features, I guess, if you want to call it, of your book. Uh, the things that people see on the outside before they buy the book itself. Uh, now, this next part that I'll get into is going to touch on things, if you want to call them internal features, uh, things that are in your text file that are, most of them are vital or that you at least should have them. And you should have them because the main reason being it just makes your book look better. And a lot of it actually gets information across to the reader that uh, they might need or that it would be nice to, for them to know, um, depending on the book. Uh, one of the things, and I, this one is vital, is the copyright page. Uh, and I'll show you here. I have a book uh, that I read, and it is The Cold War by John Lewis Gaddis. And uh, it was a good book. It's basically a survey of the Cold War, nothing really too much in depth. Uh, there's a lot of books out there about this time frame, this time period. But um, I have some really good, or this book has some really good uh, examples of the different things I want to talk about. So I'll show you here. All right, so opening up here, the first thing that we come to in this book is praise for the Cold War. So these, these are basically just little reviews uh, given by different readers, and you can see this is a very well-read book, and it's a very popular book, very good read. Um, I think it was a very good read. And then the next thing we come to is about the author. Now, I'll just start here by saying that the order of things in the beginning of this book is not necessarily a definitive order of anything. It, you know, there are some conventions in different genres that you have to have certain things first. Uh, you know, it just depends, and again, it comes back to your preference. Uh, I, with my books, I kind of stepped a little bit aside from convention and had a certain order to my books, but they're all the same. So in my World War II collection, they all match. So that way, there's some uh, uniformity to the look of them, to the aesthetics. Uh, so there's an about the author, and then this is the title page. So the title page basically has the title, and then if there's like a subtitle there, the uh, author, and then the publisher. 
that's basically all that there is on the title page. And then here's the copyright page. This is something, again, I said this is vital. Uh, you, you know, some copyright pages aren't this long, you know, they're not the whole length of the page. Some are half, some are three quarters. It just depends on what all you're putting in there. Uh, a book that has been, uh, you know, has new additions throughout the years. If it's an older book, you know, they'll have all the different additions in there. In this case, you can see there are different um, publishers. Uh, you know, through Penguin Books uh, in different countries, and then, you know, just that kind of stuff. So, again, it just kind of comes back to, you know, the context of what your book is and what it's all about and what all is involved in making it. And then, in this case, the author chose to make an in, in, in memory page uh, to George F. Kennan, and uh, again, that's just something that he wanted to add in. And then, preface, and then table of contents, pretty straightforward stuff maps and a lot of times you see uh, in books you know there'll be a, a page filled up on the right side and then the left will be or the verso that's called a verso or the opposite side is blank and that's just a style thing uh, that is a convention that you probably would want to stick with uh, you know whatever uh, genre you're writing in uh, because always, you know, it makes sense when you open up the cover, the first page you see is on the right side. So that's kind of why it's like that. Uh, you know, it gives a uh, con table of contents for maps. And then if there's anything else, then you would add that in. And then this is called a half title page. Um, it's basically just the basic title of the book. So in this case, it's the Cold War. And that's all that's on the page. There's no page number. Uh, it's just something that kind of separates the front matter, and that's what that is called, uh, the matter at the front of the book, with the body of the text. So if you have a prologue, then it would start here if it just goes right into the body, chapter one, and so on. So basically, that's it for front matter. We'll turn to the back here and continue our, our little lesson. <laughs> Um, if you okay, so here I'm somewhere in between um, the somewhere in the epilogue. So then at the end of that, in this case, there are notes. Uh, you know, being a, a historical nonfiction book, there are usually a lot of notes and a lot of uh, references to different things. Um, I'll try to skip ahead here a little bit, but you have notes uh, if you want to have a a uh, bibliography. You know, the books that the author referenced. Uh, you know that would be that would come next, and you know you want to put it in uh, alphabetical order by last name. You know a lot of uh, a lot of formatting things here, and then the next part, uh, you know, ph photograph credits. And again, if your book has illustrations or photographs, you need to put those in there. Uh, map sources, index. The index again, uh, depending on the book. You may not have an index, but if you do, then it would go in the back matter, front matter and back matter. Uh, like I said, it's very straightforward stuff. And I believe that is it for this book. Um, the very last page, I think this is a just a preference, uh, a style preference for you. Um, in this case, they say, you know, for the best in paperbacks, look for, you know, then there's the little penguin logo. Uh, but then they give information on where you can find them in various countries. Uh, so that's, you know, this book being published by a big name publisher, that's probably something that they wanted to have put in the back of the book. Uh, you know, whether the author, you know, wanted it themselves or not, that's probably something um, that they negotiated in the deal. Uh, you know, to get the book out, but that's just something there. And then there's a back cover. So it's pretty much um, it's pretty much the basic gist of things in terms of front matter and back matter. Uh, you know, again, depending on your genre and your preference, you may want to have certain things in there that I didn't mention that weren't in this book. Um, you may want to have some things that I did. You know, it just depends. Uh, now I'll kind of make a little bit of mention now, but I'll get into it more uh, when I in the next video when I talk about the different uh, formats that you can upload. But with your Kindle book, if you're uploading to Kindle, you will want to have uh, in your back matter. You want to have a link to the book sales page and or to your website. I mean, you can really put a link to anything in there. Um, and Kindles nowadays, you know, any Kindle, especially like the Fires, you can uh, click and it'll just go right to the internet. Uh, before, like I think the first generation of Kindle, it didn't have, I mean, it, it had internet in the sense that you can, you know, sync 
and uh, download books, but you couldn't browse the internet on your on the Kindle. Uh, but in this case, you know, with newer generations, you can, uh, and that's just one way, an easy way. You know, a little bit of legwork, and once you figure it out and how to do it and make it work, then it's it's cake after that. But a little bit of work will help you uh, get your name out there, and it gives them gives the reader one more opportunity to click on a link to your website or to your book's page or whatever you put in there. Uh, because if you don't, then that's you know, that, that's just silly, really. Um, you know, why would you not want to give the reader an opportunity to check out, you know, other books that you've written or to go to your website and contact you directly or leave a review or whatever the case is. So it's really good to put that in there. Something else that the reader might not see right away uh, in terms of the features of the book are things uh, on the back cover. So if it's a print book, uh, like for example on my books, the top half of the book uh, there is the synopsis or the, the quick little description of the plot of the story and then on the bottom is the author bio of me uh, and it'll change with every book uh, you know I want to kind of use that as a way to promote my most recent release so the first book obviously I've not released anything yet so I just put just a basic bio and in, the, in my second book I mention my first book and then when my third book comes out later this year hopefully uh, I'll include information about my first and second book or at least my second book that way it's you know you, there's a successive uh, thread of connection between all of your books okay now once you get all of these little bits and pieces of information and detail together and you have them input into your book whether it's to KDP or to create space Amazon's print affiliate uh, in my experience it's good to have that information recorded somewhere now I have a master uh, word document that has for each book it'll have the title uh, the ISBN the ASIN uh, the direct link to the sales page as well as to the page on my website uh, I also have that in another um, Word document, but the the reason that I do this is because for future I for the future I can easily reference them if I need to. Uh, so, for example, I recently had to give uh, information about myself and uh, a book that I was featuring uh, for. And I'm trying to think of what that was now. It was either the the book expo in Dayton or uh, for a reviewer. Regardless of what it was, I had to find, you know, the summary of the book that is the actual, that's the summary that's on the print book and then on the, uh, the Kindle sales page, so that way there's continuity between everything. Um, not that it would be a big deal if I gave a different synopsis or a, a summary, but it just makes it, it just makes sense to do it that way. Um, and then the ISBN I had to give, uh, and just little things like that and then the, the my updated bio. See, that's why I said if it's good to have um, your bio be updated as you publish new works because then if you give an old bio, it's there may not, there may be a contextual difference um, that you don't want when submitting it to something like a reviewer or for an expo or whatever the case is. So I put all those together in a Word document. That way it's right there on the spot. I can get it. I know exactly where it is, and I know the information is correct in the sense that it's the same as what's live to the world. Okay, so that's basically what you need to know uh, with regard to your book's features and what you have to have ready uh, when you upload your text, uh, your text file. And there, are, there might be other things that come up along the way, uh, or if you, you know, if you read certain things and there's something that you read about that I didn't include in this video, um, then, you know, by all means you can include it. Just figure out how to do it correctly. Uh, it's always good to do a little bit of extra homework, a little bit of legwork to make sure you're doing it right, than to just kind of assume you know what's, you know, what the convention is or what you're doing and then doing it. Uh, because once your book is live, then it's live. I mean, yeah, you can fix an error and re-upload the file, but, you know, you don't want to take that chance. Well, thanks for watching today's video. Like I said, this one goes hand-in-hand hand with the next video. So if you have a few extra minutes more to watch, then stick around. Um, and uh, after that video, then that'll be it. So, uh, for writing process, at least. So, uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber yet, please subscribe. And uh, see you in the next video.